I think that's all we need to cover in the beginning. The lesson today is on radiating and receiving. Yes, Lionel? Uh, just, Kathy, um, if, just making sure that someone will give me, uh, let me know when it's 20 after so that I know I have a couple of minutes left before I pass off to you. I got you covered here. I, I set an alarm for 19 more minutes. Yay. All right, I'll quit, I'll quit finish talking so we can get to Lionel. What we want to do to begin today is to do something we call crossing the threshold. Uh, Chekhov thought this was very important. We want to cross the threshold and move into the space where our higher egos can really um, take over. Um, and it's simply an act of saying there is no judgment, there is no tension. We are together. I am at my best as an individual, and I am at my best with the entire ensemble. So what I want you to do is to imagine that there's a, a line right in front of you on the floor. And all you're going to do is when you're ready, you're going to step over that line and cross the threshold so we can begin the class together. All right? I keep looking as if you're all in my living room. All right. Cross the threshold and you're ready. Okay. Um, so Chekhov has a lot of his birth dates and imagination. And we've now crossed the threshold. Sorry. Can't hear you, Lionel. Can't hear me? Can you hear yeah. me now? That's better. Just turn okay. your volume. Okay. All righty. So um, a lot of Chekhov's work is based in imagination. And these first couple of steps are about preparing the actor. Uh, this next thing is called the actor's ideal center. Okay. And it, it uses a lot of imagination. So. Um, and there are several different ways of doing this. So you will see different teachers enter into this in different ways. Uh, and I've sort of come to my own way uh, in the last few years. So begin first by imagining that there is a warm sun shining down on you. And just imagine that you can feel those warm rays making you feel wonderful and allowing that feeling to read in your body and your face without forcing anything. And now imagine that magically, those rays of sun can go under your skin, wrap around your muscles, fill your joints, and then course through your veins and arteries until it centers around your heart in the feeling center. And then imagine that now you can jump up and grab that sun and put it in your feeling center here, and when you do, you begin to radiate like the sun, letting yourself shine. Yeah. Perhaps your arms are open like mine, but they don't have to be. And just now, imagine that you can fill the room with light just by turning around and letting that radiation come out of your body. You might imagine that the color is yellow. You're sending warm yellow streams out of your body. Chekhov uses that phrase a lot, the streams of light going out of your body. And then just let yourself stand there at ease, nice feeling at ease, and see if you can continue that radiation just into the space. And then pull it back. until you turn it off. Now turn it back on and send it out. Do that a few times. Chekhov says repetition is the growing power so that you turn it on. And when you turn it back on, it's perhaps stronger than it was before. And anytime you need to return to that image of the sun here, feel free to do so and open it up like this. Pull it in and send it back out. Now, we're going to imagine that actually that warm radiating center here, that sun is traveling through your whole body. So let's send the sun from here into our joints. So you get a little ball of sun in your, the joint in your shoulder, and the other one, and now send it into your elbows, and your wrists, and 
in all of your knuckles. Then starting here, sending it down through your rib cage, and then back into your neck and in all the down all the joints of your spine. So now your whole torso is filled with little balls of light, little balls of sun, and they're radiating warmth and light through your whole body. And now it goes down into your hips and your knees, your ankles. And then lastly, we're going to send it up into the neck and into the face and the head. And you can follow that with your hands if you want to. So now you are filled with light. And that light creates energy through your whole body. So imagine that inside your physical body is an energy body. It's the same size and shape as your physical body, but it's made of energy and light. And now imagine that starting here, begin a movement, and you send that energy from your feeling center into your energy body arm, and you let it rise, and then you follow it with your physical arm. And just keep on sending it out your fingertips so that you get a feeling as though it's going up to the ceiling, and even through the ceiling and up into the sky. And then you let it come back down and your physical arm follows it. Now try with the other one. It begins here. The energy body arm, which starts to raise, and your physical arm follows it. down. And now imagine that the same thing happens with your leg. The movement begins here in this center and in your imagination. And you send that energy down into your body through your leg, whichever one you wish. And the energy body legs takes a step and your physical body follows it. And you send that light down through the floor, through the earth, as far down as you can, and into the center of the earth, back, and then repeat the same thing down through the body from the ceiling center, allowing the energy body leg to take that step, following it with your physical body, sending that energy down, just sending light and energy out of your body in all different directions. You can reach into the backspace. Let yourself imagine that that energy streams beyond your physical body into the space. So that in fact you're filling the space with energy and light. Let it be fun. Now just come to a standstill for a moment and choose a spot across the room. Doesn't have to be too far away at first. And now imagine that you send your arm, your, your energy body arm to that space, across the space, following it with the physical arm. And keep sending it out until you know the energy has touched that spot. Give you joy. Back. Choose a different spot. A little farther away this time. Sending your energy body arm there and following it with your physical arm and allowing that energy to continue to stream until you touch that spot with your energy body. It can be up. <sighs> you can 
go behind you. And now, what if we involve the whole body? I think I need to speak, speak loud, don't I? So if we use the whole body now, we're going to go for a walk. So what we're going to do is imagine that walk and then send it out with our energy body walking and then follow it. Sorry. Okay. So that you start a walk around your space and your energy body is always just a little bit in front of you drawing you your physical body along as you go for that walk. Okay, so just play with that for a few moments. I'm not sure how big your space is, uh, but you're not on camera, so you can leave the room you're in and go through another room. You can go across the room, uh, whatever you wish. Okay, um, and what I'd like you to do is maybe do that a walk for about a minute. And if you, say, if you start to lose the radiation, that feeling of radiation, just come back to a, a, a no motion, a zero point, find it again, send it out, and start again. Right? You may have noticed when I was talking it and started to do it, I said in sending it out, my physical body actually leaned forward in an impulse to follow the energy body. That's what you're meant to be looking for. Okay? All right. So let's go on that walk. And you're walking with purpose, okay? It's not cash. And as you walk through the space, receive it. Really see where you are as you move through the space. And Kathy will get more, get, give you more about receiving in a little bit. Just come back. We're gonna build on this now. So that what you're going to do, and I'm gonna, wait a minute, I'll go back from the camera so you can see what I'm doing. But basically what I'm gonna do is start that walk with the energy body, follow it, and then at some point I'm going to stop, but keep the flow of the energy body going, maybe pull it in a little bit, and then send it back out and follow it, and just keep doing that, stopping physically, but keeping the energy of the energy body moving out of you in the forward direction, okay? And then pull it in a little bit, or a little bit farther, experiment with how far you pull it in, but don't ever let it completely die, okay? And so you can just do that now. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I begin my walk. And then at some point I come to a stop. But can you see that the energy is still flowing forward out of me? That's what you're looking for. And then I pull it in a little bit. Send it back out and follow it. And then I might stop again. Okay, so let's do that. So you begin by imagining that walk. And then with your energy body, begin the walk, sending it out and finding that impulse to follow it with your physical body. And then at your own choice, choose to physically stop, but keep that energy moving forward. Pull it in a little bit so you feel the difference send it back out and follow it again. And just keep repeating that sequence so that you get a feeling for what it's like to radiate with the whole body. Each time you stop, 
pull it, radiate it a little bit longer before you pull it in, and maybe pull it in a little bit farther, or further, I guess is the right word, and send it back out and follow it. And then come back. I'm judging when to move on by where Kathy is. <laughs> so I hope people are caught up. Okay, so now we're going to add contact. Okay. Um, and I will use my computer screen as the point of contact. Um, but you can choose objects in the room. I just want you to be able to see what I'm doing. Okay, so I choose something. In this case, I'm going to choose my computer screen right in the middle of my face, perhaps, when I get up there. And I'm going to send my energy body to that object. And then when I know that I've contacted it with my energy body, I'm going to go to it and touch it. And then choose something else across the room. Maybe a little farther away this time. And I send my energy body to it. And as it travels across the space, I have more and more impulse to follow it, but I don't get into it. I don't let it die either. And then when I contact it, I go to it. And then choose something else. Okay, so just play with that for a couple of minutes. And you can use an arm if you want to point at something. Instead of just sending your whole body, you can let it come through your arm and let the rest of your body follow. Sorry, that was off screen. Just a point. And now this last thing I'm going to do um, comes out of that point. It's an exercise that the Actors Ensemble uh, in New York taught at the Chekhov workshop many, many years ago. And I call it point look. I don't even know if they have a formal name for it. Uh, but what you do is the same, it begins with the same process. You're going to choose an object across the space and you're going to send your energy body to it and when you feel that it's contacted, you're going to cross through the space and point at the object and keep sending the energy and then say, look. Radiate that for a few moments so you sustain that point after the word look. And then choose another object. And let's say you do that three times and see if you can increase the level of radiation each time. So the process is radiate to the object, walk towards it with purpose, point. Notice my back arm is also involved. Radiate for a few seconds, say look. Radiate for a few seconds more and then do another. So do one more and then come on back and I will pass off to Kathy. Lionel? Yes. Before you pass off, could you take just a minute to talk about what the energy body concept is and sometimes we call it life body? 
Yes. Um, so it, it really, um, the, the term life body is a, 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 um, a phrase that uh, Leonard Petit developed. And actually, he's changed it now to your energetic body, um, uh, mainly because a couple of people thought life body sounded a little artsy fartsy. Uh, and, and people might d dismiss it. But this really is about uh, the energy body is about radiation mm -hmm. and it's about activating the whole inside and outside, right? So that every movement begins internal. And part of the principle is that when you're working with that kind of energy, you've heightened and theatricalized your physicality and your psychology but remained truthful in an artistic way. Uh, Michael Chekhov talked about the difference between truth and life and truth and art, right? And, and uh, in, in theater, he was looking to develop um, a core of actors uh, who would work in a very theatrical, uh, non-mundane way so that we're not bringing ordinary life to the stage. We're bringing something more artistic than that. That help? It does help. Thanks, Lionel. Good. Thank you, Kathy. Your turn. <laughs> that was great. Okay, my turn. Um, I still see Lionel on the screen. That's great. I'll do the class to him. Um, I'm going to talk about receiving. Lionel did radiating. I'm doing receiving. And receiving is actually the opposite of radiation. Um, to receive, Chekhov says, means we draw energy toward us. We allow impressions to come to us. We actually invite those impressions in. Um, on stage, we receive the presence of our partners. We receive their words, their actions, the event, the set, the atmosphere, the audience. Chekhov says that everything that should make an impression upon us as an actor and as a character, we should invite in and receive. That is in the first five chapters of To the Actor. You'll find that. So I think this is really great because then as actors, we're relieved of any responsibility of doing, quote, acting, because what we're doing is listening and reacting to what is said to us, what is happening around us, and we simply respond. Now, receive also means to relate, to be open. Uh, we must receive everything that is going on around us because we are always in relation to something or someone. Even when we're alone on stage, we are in relation to something or someone. Maybe it's just happened, maybe it's going to happen, maybe it's something that's on stage, maybe it's a prop. As Lionel did, we can put the spot on the wall, we can find an object that we relate to. So we always have that. So if we start from that idea that our performance originates from responding to something, you never have to feel lost on stage. We always have something there that we are responding to. Now this is not, um, we're not becoming statues, we're not standing here becoming statues. Actually uh, receiving energy and receiving what is there is, it, it takes a lot of energy on our part. It takes a lot of concentration. And if you're with us on Friday, um, as Lionel mentioned, you'll have a lesson with James Hafner, who is another one of our teachers and a member of our board. And Jim is going to be doing a lesson on imagination and concentration, as Lionel mentioned. And you will learn some of these um, exercises that you can do even on your own uh, to increase your concentration. Uh, concentration is an act of will. So that's for Friday. Uh, but it doesn't mean we stand here just like statues. Um, we are always receiving. And if we think of it, acting, what we do as actors is the result of receiving. Um, we speak in response to something we have experienced in the moment. So we've received it. We respond to it. Hey, Kathy, it looks like your internet is just cutting out the slightest bit. Our bodies need to be at ease. Just take a moment there and get reset. There was just a little skip in your internet. So just take a breath and go at it again. Sorry about that. Just go back maybe like a 
couple seconds. Oh. Uh, say that one more time, just a little bit louder. Sorry. Uh, we are not statues on stage. We are no, sorry, Kathy. Hold on one second. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna show myself here. I think there was just a little hiccup in your internet, so sometimes you just gotta give it a couple seconds to reset itself. But don't worry about it. Uh, let's wait until you smooth out just a moment. No, I'm having trouble hearing you again. That's okay. That's all right. Hey, nothing we can do. We are all just at the mercy of our internet connection. Just give it one more second. You're looking pretty smooth now. Go ahead and give it a try. Okay. Um, I think I was saying acting is a result of receiving. Um, we speak in response to what we have experienced in that moment, whatever moment that is. Um, Oh dear, I see the sign again for the consortium. Have I gone off again? You, we can still hear you very clearly though. So that's the important I, part until, oh, yeah. <laughs> and no, um, until you start the physical exercise, but your audio was coming in clearly that time. So that's helpful. So we speak in response to what we have experienced. It says that our bodies must be at ease in order to receive. Because it's a natural state, um, it's a state, ease is a state of, whether it's in judgment, feel judgment, feel attention, there's no pushing energy. Ease is actually one of the four brothers. And if you're with us on Wednesday, uh, Susan Cato Chapman, <clears throat> also one of our teachers, and a member of our board of Chapman mentions ease as the first of the four brothers. And he says it is, as I said, a natural state, and it's like breathing. Breathing is a continuous process. Hopefully, we're not working at that. We simply breathe, inhale, and exhale. And Chekhov says that when we inhale, we absorb the experiences that surround us, that happen around us. And perhaps it's something our partner does on stage. Uh, perhaps it's something that we are in relation to, and we're absorbing that. So we inhale it. And we absorb, we receive that experience. And then as we exhale, we express ourselves and we send whatever we have received back out into the space and we make way for a fresh inhale to receive and absorb whatever experience has been there. So it's a constant state of transformation um, and it's a constant state of giving and receiving. Chekhov says we can't give until we receive. Um, so before we give out, we have to take in. Um, in Chekhov, in uh, at Great Lakes Michael Chekhov Consortium, we do a lot of this with ball toss games. Um, and we simply toss the ball. It's a great way of learning about giving and receiving and about radiating. Um, we can't do that on Zoom. So I have an exercise, a couple of exercises that I was going to do with you. I guess I'll have to talk you through it rather than take you through it physically, um, which is kind of a bummer. Um, I want to reiterate something that Lionel said. He said, repetition is the growing power. Um, we have said that um, many, many times. Chekhov said that many, many times. We say it constantly at the consortium. Um, but it's true. The more we do something, the more adept we become. So with these exercises, the two that I'm going to give you, the more you do them, the more you will become aware of your own inner impulses and your response to what is around you. You will begin to receive everything that is in um, the atmosphere around you to what is given you. And you'll be able to listen more carefully to your own body, become more self-aware and can follow those impulses. Um, so Jordan, I still am not uh, on camera, right? No, actually you leveled out really nicely over the course of that, so well done. Okay, so I'm on camera? Yes, everything looks very clear and crystal, so thank you for your patience on that, everyone. Yes, thank you. Now I'm going to get my chair. I hope you all have a chair. I'm going to put my chair on stage. It's right here. And I'm going to talk you through this exercise because then we're going to do it together. 
Um, and I'm not going to speak because I want you to be able to experience the exercise to receive whatever is there without my voice intruding, because then my voice is what you're going to receive and not whatever um, is in the exercise for you to receive. It's a very simple exercise. We've got our chair. Our chair is now on stage. We're gonna take a couple steps off stage. We're going to exit. Then when I say begin, we will enter. We will see the chair. We will see the audience in front of us. We will sit in the chair and we will receive the audience. Um, and I hope that you will be able to deepen the experience of receiving the audience by truly using some of that concentration and bringing it into you. Try very hard to deepen that experience. Don't work at it. I should not say try very hard. Don't work at it. There should be a feeling of ease, but I want you to be able to receive what is there. When you have received it, when you feel the impulse, and I hope you will, I want you to say a very simple two words. Say thank you. And then after you said thank you, let that resonate not only for yourself, but for what has been transformed by your receiving of what is in the space. And then simply get up and walk off stage. All right? So I'm going to exit. And I will say enter and we will do it together. Okay. Enter. Thank you. I apologize if you heard that noise. I have my phone turned off, but it rang anyway. I hope you were all able to complete the exercise and that you were able to feel the impulse, the receiving of the impulse and the receiving of the space. If not, do not worry about it. Just continue to do the exercise. It's very, very simple. And I think with the repetition, you will be able to experience it. Um, now, one more exercise. And this exercise comes from something Lionel had told me about that one of our other teachers uh, from Germany uh, was talking about um, at one of the Nisha conferences. And I liked it so much, I sort of, I don't know, I've never seen the exercise, but I worked it on my own and came up with this. And I think it works. So I'd like to share that with you today. And we're going to do it together, and this time I will talk you through it. So I want you to stand with your feet sort of evenly apart your weight balanced over both feet. Take a breath in, inhale. And on the exhale, reach your arm out to the right. Follow it with your eyes. And whatever is in that space, take hold of it with your hand. Receive it and bring it back into your actor's ideal center and leave it there. Now reach out with your left arm, follow with your eyes. I want you to take hold of whatever is there, absorb it, bring it back to you into your actor's ideal center. Now I want you to look up with both hands. Receive whatever is there to be received. 
and bring it back to your actor's ideal center. I want you to look down with both hands. Take whatever is there, receive it, bring it to your actor's ideal center. Now I want you to move forward with both hands. Receive what is there. Bring it back to your act actor's ideal center. And now reach into your backspace. Receive what is there. And bring it to your actor's ideal center. We've now honored all six directions. We have received everything that is surrounding us. Let it resonate. Feel it in your bodies. And now we're ready to work. I don't know about you, but as I was doing that last exercise, I started to get the sensations. I felt tingles in my body because I was receiving what was around me. Um, and I think receiving, even though it's silly to say so, receiving what was coming to me through the computer, knowing that you were all there doing this exercise with me. And I really began to feel that sense of community and an ensemble of working together. Um, I think we have lots of time. Uh, Jordan? Yes, Lionel. Yeah, just, I would just like to add a couple of things. Yes, please. I, I don't know if, if you experienced this or not, but I thought I would put it out there in case you did. Uh, I think that when one receives successfully, it automatically causes you to radiate because of the contact with the person or the object, right? Yes. And I think that's why Chekhov talks about you receive first and then radiate, even though we taught it the other way around. Um, <laughs> And I think, it, I don't know how many of you are teachers of young actors, but this lesson is very valuable in terms of when you get to pursuing an objective. Um, I think on the other side, it is possible to radiate like a bull in a china shop, right? And not receive anything that comes to you. And so often I find with my young actors, when they're first beginning, they pursue the objective, but nothing gets in. Right? Whatever the other person does, it doesn't matter, they're doing it. I, and they don't have any adjustments because of what is happening. And learning that you receive and radiate simultaneously, sometimes more strongly with one than the other, and then they reverse, and that's constant. When you're, when you're talking or when the other character is talking, you're still radiating, you're still receiving. Um, so combining this beginning lesson and putting it into the lessons on pursuing an objective, relationship with partner, fighting the obstacle, all of that stuff is really valuable for getting them to work without muscling. Yes, wonderful, thank you, Lionel. And you know, um, and Mod 1 of GLMCC, and I hope we see all of you in Mod 1 next year, and I hope we can all be together um, in person. Um, these are some of the lessons that um, we'll be sharing with you. Um, so I think we do have time now. We've done our 40 minutes of normal class time. So I think we have time for um, a little bit of spyback. Jordan? Yes, so I think the best way to make sure that I um, can get to the questions in the order in which they are being submitted is for everybody to use chat. And I think actually to make it easier on everybody, I'm gonna make it so that people can only message me. I think it may have been like that already. But just so, uh, great, perfect. So everybody can go ahead, just use chat, doesn't matter, it'll just get to me no matter what. Go ahead and submit questions. Um, I believe that's gonna be the easiest way to do this since, again, having so many people with so many microphones can really mess with the audio of Zoom. Um, so I apologize if that feels a little impersonal, but it's so that we can hear everybody properly. Um, somebody actually, oh, sorry, go ahead. While fingers are clicking away, mm -hmm. uh, the thing I will add is that when we teach this lesson in person, we of course work with partners. So yes. that you're contacting another person and receiving another person. 
And when we do the ball tossing, you're always tossing to a specific person so that you would get the idea of giving and receiving and radiating to that person, receiving what they send to you. Um, that's what's so valuable, I think, about the ball tossing. Okay, great. So somebody had actually submitted a question just as the whole class had ended. Uh, so I'm just going to read it just as it's typed. So for warm up purposes, do we do, did I get quiet again? Yes, you did. I'm just going to bring my microphone nice and close to my face. Apologies, or else you get a lot of background noise. Okay, so where did that question go? Great. For warm-up purposes, do we do radiation exercises first to get into our energetic bodies, even though we receive in order to radiate? Ah, oh, that's a good question. Yeah. Um, I, I do think we begin with crossing the threshold and finding yes. ideal, ideal actor center. And once you've done that, that image of that warm, bright yellow sun in your feeling center, that's automatically going to start you radiating. Yes. Yeah. And if we always start from that actor's ideal center, I think that we sort of, it comes naturally. It's like Chekhov says, it's like breathing. It's a, it's a natural state of inhaling and exhaling. We bring in that sun, whatever it is, to the actor's ideal center, and we automatically send it out. So I think, yes, um, perhaps the radiation comes first. Yeah, um, and, and when I've got a group in class who are all in the space together, um, we, what we do is once we find that sun, we receive that sun from others and radiate it to others, and then we begin the walk as a group. So that as you pass people, you're making eye contact, receiving them and radiating to them at the same time. Right, so that you're creating meaningful connection that's not ordinary every day as part of the warm up, and the imagination is also part of the warm up. Chekhov said that if you're doing anything physical without imagination, it's merely calisthenics. Uh, yes. and, and the other thing he said that I love is everything you do in the studio or on stage is a little piece of art. Yes. So a walk is a little piece of art because we're radiating and receiving. The one thing I would add, Ryan, is I know that um, this teaching this fall semester is going to be um, a chore for everybody because we don't know what it's going to be. And we may well be in a classroom where we have to wear masks. And one of the things I love about radiating is that if we take away the smile, we are really forced to radiate, yes, through here. And I think that you know, in some ways we look for the positive, that can be a positive of uh, having to overcome that obstacle in the classroom this semester, yeah. Jordan, anything else? Yeah, absolutely. I figured I would mute my camera so that everybody can focus on you guys uh, as I go back and forth with questions. Uh, the next question I received, can you go into greater detail about the actor's ideal center, which was mentioned during receiving? Ah. Well, the actor's ideal center is in the feeling center. We call it in the feeling center. And when Lionel was um, helping us activate, he was bringing the sun to the actor's ideal center. Um, and we always want to work from this place because it is our higher self. You know, Lionel talked about the fact when we're on stage, we're more theatrical, where it's a higher elevation of performance while still being truthful and authentic. And this higher ego is our best selves that we want to present. Chekhov um, didn't have much tolerance for uh, conflict um, on stage and conflict between actors. He wanted us to work together. He says the theater of the future must be full of that kind of ensemble. And so we work from the actor's ideal center, becoming our best selves so that we can work with one another. And I think that's what we try and model at GLMCC. Um, one of the things that all students really seem to remark on is the fact that all the teachers are so open. Um, they seem to really enjoy being in one another's presence and they enjoy being in the class with us. There is so much joy in this work and that comes from the actor's ideal center. Go ahead, Lionel. Yeah, are you done, Kathy? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, and, and just a note that this is actually, it is an emotional center, yes. and it's the actor's center, not the characters. Yes. And for those of you who've got a movement background, yes, your physical center is still down in your hips, in your will center, um, and it's possible to have both. So this is a way of bringing your, you, the artist, to the class, 
the rehearsal, the performance. And Chekhov says that when you step into the character, you carry the actor's ideal center underneath it. And yeah. this is your, um, the, the, the way that the actor stays involved with the character and makes artistic choices. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yep. That Something, help? Yes, it does help. I hope it does help. Something I tell my students um, is that we leave our baggage outside the door. And when you come in the door to the classroom, you cross the threshold, you're in, you activate your actor's ideal center, and there's nothing else that exists. It is simply us in this space. None of that everyday stuff comes with you. We are together as an ensemble um, with our higher egos. Yeah. Jordan? Yes, great, fantastic. Moving on, uh, could you talk through the steps for the chair exercise quickly? Do you receive audience before sitting? Ah. I'd be happy to. Um, the exercise is you have the chair on stage. I'll start from the beginning in case you didn't get it. Um, chairs on stage, you go off stage. You enter, you see the chair, you see the audience, you sit in the chair, and that is when the receiving begins. You've taken them in as you come in as you see the chair and you see the audience. But as you sit, you then begin to receive uh, the audience. And that's when we hope that you can begin to deepen that experience of receiving the audience. We receive them, we receive them, whatever is there with them, with the atmosphere, whatever is surrounding, and you deepen that experience. And as that experience deepens, hopefully that is when the impulse comes to say thank you and you allow that to resonate. And once it resonates, and it really needs to resonate with you as well as into the space, it's that inhale and exhale again. Then you can stand up, you say thank you, you're resonating, you stand up and you exit. Um, is, that, is that clear now? It was to me. <laughs> I just, I, something hit me when you were talking uh, going back to that earlier question about radiating and receiving, I yeah. think when you're learning the exercise or teaching the first step, you always radiate first. But yes. it just occurred to me, when we started working with an actual object and I had you look at it, you received it first. The receiving was the yes. first thing to happen and then the radiating. So yeah. it's quite natural. And yes. so I, I love this little teeny piece of art, this little scene because it's really simple and it really is about receiving. You're off stage, you receive the chair, which makes you radiate to the chair, which makes you move to the chair, right? It's a continuous state, like Chekhov says, everything works continually, yes, yeah. Did that answer it, I hope? I think so. Um, I will move on to the next question if you're feeling good. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, next question is, I often find myself becoming emotionally overwhelmed when receiving and radiating because I feel it so acutely. What are some ways to moderate the emotional response or would it be better to utilize these emotions in the action? Hmm. I, well, I would like Kathy take it too, but um, I, I really think that just accept the emotional response um, and let yourself become overwhelmed and then repeat. And I think over time, if you don't resist that overwhelmed feeling, it will er eventually diminish where you actually have control over how much of the emotional response you're allowing out, right? So that there's that feeling of, um, I, I, the, we sometimes use the image of the iceberg, right? That you're letting out 10% or 20%, but 80% is underneath and you're in control of it. Uh, but I think it's that whole principle of you have to go over the edge before you know where it is. Yeah. And then um, after a while, you'll be able to be in more control artistically of the radiating and receiving. Yeah, yeah I, I think I agree with everything. I, I do agree with everything you said, Lionel. I think that one of the things for me is I know that um, in rehearsal, uh, I think very often because we actors are feeling people, um, we do sometimes get overwhelmed and there have been times when, you know, you, you're out of control and um, you can't go on. 
but repetition is the growing power. And that growing power means that we're going to learn what that emotion, whatever that overwhelming is, we're going to learn how it radiates in the body and how we can then use it so that it doesn't overwhelm us and we can use it for um, to help the presence of our partners on stage, to help the uh, surroundings, whatever is going on around us, to enhance that rather than enhancing ourselves. We have enormous power, uh, psychophysical power in our bodies. And through the repetition and working on it, I think we can learn to use it uh, to our best advantage, to become our best possible selves on stage. And you might also use that, um, the technique of, of the walk. If you remember when I said, you go for the walk and you stop walking and you, you continue to radiate, but then you pull it in, make it a little less powerful. And that may help you where if you're starting to feel overwhelmed, pull in the power of your radiation a little bit yeah. and maybe receive a little less strongly if you need to. Yeah. Um, Although I think that the, the loss of, of control is more in the radiation than probably in the receiving. Yeah. Uh, so that too may help. Yes. Good. Great. Jordan? I think we have time for a couple more here, so I'm just gonna keep on going. Uh, okay. as a <laughs> Fantastic. As a director and teacher, to help others find their ideal center, do we use the sun exercise? Or how best do we help actors understand the concept of the ideal center? Hmm. Well, I, for me, um, I teach it um, that I cross the threshold first and then I activate the actor's ideal center. That's the way I remember being taught, so that's the way I teach it. Some people teach that in reverse. However you teach it, I think, um, as Lionel said, when he was um, teaching uh, the radiation, if you wanna use the image of the sun, I like that image. I also like uh, to do the rubbing of the hands really, 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 really hard until you feel the heat in your hands. And then I place that in my feeling center, my actor's ideal center, until I begin to feel that warmth that begins to radiate throughout my body. Um, if you read the first five chapters of To the Actor, um, Chekhov does talk about the actor's ideal center. He talks about the higher ego. Um, and it's a really important concept, I think, for the technique because we want our students to understand it. So, uh, you can use the sun, you can use the warming of the hands, you can cross the threshold and do it, you can do it before you cross the threshold. That part doesn't matter as long as the students understand that what it means to work from the ideal center, the actor's ideal center, is that we're working from a place of acceptance of everyone and using our higher ego in order to work our artistic selves, as Lionel said. Yeah, and, and the, the sun is the image that Chekhov gave us. Yes, yeah. Great, perfect. Um, I'm gonna have time for one more, maybe two. I just wanna be respectful of everybody's time today. Uh, so the next one I have in line is, when it comes to radiating and receiving, how can you make sure that you keep this energy inside of a performance and not let it affect you outside of your character? Okay. Um, I'll, I'll jump in, Kathy, and you come in when you're ready. Um, I, I think that this, this is like a muscle, but it's an imagination muscle, and you've got to work it like you do your biceps, right? So that's why the training and the repetition is so important, that we do it in every warm-up, we do it in every exercise, uh, and we do it in every rehearsal, so that we build our ability to radiate. But the other thing is too, that if you catch yourself in the middle of a rehearsal and you've stopped radiating, just turn it back on. Nobody even has to know, right? And eventually, it, it is about being vigilant, right? And, and eventually, radiation and receiving will become natural. And this is the thing, the repetition of the growing power statement is all about taking it from being an exercise to being, this is how I operate as an actor. Yeah. Um, Chekhov says in Lessons for Teachers um, that eventually you have to not need the exercise. Yes. Right? Um, and, and that's one of the problems, of course, that you may run into uh, with, um, with young uh, actors in training is that they're, they're up in the rehearsal doing their homework in their head. Yeah. 
right? What did I write down when I was sitting in Starbucks? I have to remember all of it. Um, and, and there's this uh, a wonderful um, Canadian play by Danny McIver. Uh, I think it's actually called This is a Play. And all the actors come on and speak what they're thinking. Uta Hagen would have loved that, ex that entrance. You know, and it's all this stuff. Where's my mom? Um, so it's about being here in the body and in the imagination and not the brain. Yes. Yes, it has. Yeah, I agree with everything Lionel said. Absolutely. I don't think I could have said it any better. <laughs> I see it's 4.59. Yes. Gordon, so, and I told her that the class would last about an hour. So, well, and in fact, if people have to leave, they can. Um, and, and I'm willing to stay another 15 minutes. If, uh, okay. Jordan, can you stay or do you have to leave? Uh, no, I can do another 15. That's fine. All right. For those people who want to stay, um, please do stay. We'll take more questions. For those of you who have to leave, we totally understand. We thank you so much for being with us today. Um, I hope to see you all on Wednesday um, and again on Friday. I know some of you are taking one or two of the classes, perhaps not all three. Um, but I hope to see you then. I would like to say, Jordan, can you talk about the spam thing? Talk about, sorry, what was that? The spam thing. Oh, yes, thank you for reminding me. I appreciate that. So a couple people are having trouble just receiving our Zoom links when we send them out. We are double checking and making sure every email is good to go. So if you could just do your part and check your spam folders, I send them the evening before every class. So if it's Tuesday night and you're coming in for the Wednesday class, always check your spam folder and make sure that it didn't go there because I know Gmail is very guilty of it. I'm not sure about other services, but always have that on your radar. Because I was receiving emails up until just a few minutes before we began today about people who had not received a link. Um, and I, the email went out. We know it went out. The email was the same that they sent to me saying they didn't get the link. So it's just crazy how it works. So check your spam folders or your junk folders. And, and if for any reason you can't find it, please let us know and we'll just send it right your way. It's hard for us to find you sometimes. And for um, those of you who have to leave, we'll keep in touch. Yes. Yeah, I Thank actually you. just put your both of your emails back into the chat again so that anybody can utilize them and reach out should they want to. Um, let me see where I left off very quickly. Hold, please. Do, do, do. I had it highlighted. Got it. I fixed it. <laughs> okay, let's see. Sorry about that. I had to scroll and then I lost my spot. Oh, uh, is the actor's ideal center always the heart? It, it's not the heart, it's actually the chest. The chest. Um, you will find that some teachers reduced it to the heart, um, but Chekhov actually did not say it was the heart. No, he called it the feeling center, and that's where we want it to be in the chest, the feeling center, not the heart center. Great, that one was nice and easy for you. Here's a harder one. <laughs> uh, do you use cross the threshold at uh, the beginning of every rehearsal? I think it varies from teacher to teacher and director to director, but in my classroom, we always cross the threshold the very first thing. And in every rehearsal I ran, we always cross the threshold. Um, I think it's crucial. And I didn't always remind the students because it became second nature. They would know that what they would have to do was put down the book bag, cross the threshold, and come into the classroom. Um, I don't know how Lionel would answer that. Um, I, I agree. Uh, in every class, I actually coach um, uh, crossing the threshold into Actors Ideal Center into a walk with radiation. Um, every rehearsal when I'm directing begins with crossing the threshold. And I tell the actors, when you're in the wings, stepping onto the stage is crossing a threshold in rehearsal and in performance. Yes. Okay, fantastic. Moving on. Uh, let's see. At the uh, GLMCC summer session, is there a focus on absorbing this information as an actor and lessons on how to implement it for teaching? Yes. <laughs> Great. Also, are those two separate courses at the retreat as the follow up there? It, um, everybody in Mod 1 studies together, whether you're on the actor track or the teacher certification track. Um, the difference in the two tracks is that in the teacher certification track, when you come back for the second year, you will have written a paper on your experience with the technique since you left us for Mod 1. Um, you will also have to lead a warm up and submit a lesson plan for that warm up. 
when you come back from Mod 3, again, a paper is required uh, relating your experiences, how you have used that during the prior year. And you will be assigned one of the tools of the technique to teach in a class for the faculty and for your peers. Uh, you teach the class to your peers. So the teachers do that. If you're in the after track, you are simply there experiencing the same classes as the teachers. But because in every single class we do spy back, just like we're doing now, um, people write down this stuff, they write down the exercises, they ask questions. Uh, they called us school marms when Lionel and I were doing it way back when, um, because we were writing everything down because we didn't want to miss anything. Um, so the experience that you have at GLMCC in person, we firmly believe in the ensemble. We don't make any special concessions to the teacher or the actor because we are all one. Um, it's simply in the requirements that you come back when you come back to Mod 2. Would you agree with that explanation, Lionel? Yes, although I would say that, at least I do this, um, when I'm teaching a particular tool, I may talk about the pedagogy of that tool, of the use of that yeah. tool in class for the benefit of the people who do teach. Um, and I, I think too that uh, the other thing to say is that warm up that you teach in your second module, um, it, you are required to embody the principles of Michael Chekhov without actually teaching a tool. So you might lead a yoga warm up and incorporate the four brothers, which is a feeling of ease, a feeling of form, a feeling of beauty, and a feeling of the whole, and coach the students to experience that as well. But you're not, and I think that's good. Um, it's not on the website right now, but it will be within the month. I am working on all, a guideline for all the requirements for people who are in the teacher certification track with all of this spelled out. Um, but as Lionel says, in the spyback, we often say, when you're teaching, <laughs> and those words come out of our mouths all the time, when you're teaching, um, so that we do try and cover that um, for people who are teachers. Yeah, and I actually did that today. You know, I said, I, you know, when you're teaching young actors, you may find X. Yes, you said that. Uh, so that, that's some of what happens. And the other thing is, is that we do have uh, mentorship meetings. Um, each of us takes three to five students. And in that mentorship discussion, a lot of the questions are about how do I teach this? What do I do if this happens, etc. cetera. Um, so that's how the teacher track is a little different from the actor track. Right. Although everyone does have a mentor and we meet with our right. mentors as we call them throughout the week. We also have midweek at GLMCC um, on Wednesday evening. We always meet with every single student um, to let them know how they're doing, how we evaluate their work, what we think they need to work on, what they're excelling at. Um, we try and really stay in close contact with each and every one of our students. It takes a lot of time, but that's what we love to do. That's yeah, and, and with there's always two teachers in the room. Um, yes. Sometimes one of us and then one of our associate teachers and they, the, whoever's the secondary teacher keeps track of notes on students. So that's how we keep, uh, we have something substantial to say to you in your mentorship meetings and in that midweek meeting. 